Hello there, everybody. I'm Mechanist Gamma. I'm Sinfrog. And welcome back to the second episode of Let's Talk Sonic. Today we have been a while. quite a yeah, a very long <laughs> while, like almost a year. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you move house and have a job and other such things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Plus a university on my end. But uh, we're not here to talk about us. We're here to talk about some ancient history, aren't we? Yeah. Uh... After the first episode, we made a pool of concepts for future installments, and uh, we decided to follow up on this one first, which ended up proving quite timely, considering uh, <laughs> what's going on with Sonic right now. I promise you guys, this is completely unintentional. This is the one we chose. We've been meaning to do this for, like, half a year. No, yeah, we, we picked this very, very far in advance. Um, I'm excited to do it, uh, because we have uh, some, some of those prompts that we came up with are things that I specifically uh, really want to want to talk about. So let's talk about some fucking echidnas. Indeed. Uh, first thing I should probably clarify, we're not going over the Chaos Emeralds and Master Emerald here. They definitely need their own video, especially because of what Flynn said a few months ago about apparently knowing who created the Chaos Emeralds and not being able to tell us. So... <laughs> yeah, I might want to just... Just, just, just give us some breathing room with wait for frontiers to drop just in case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe but, we'll talk about the soul emeralds there as well. Mm -hmm. But as far as uh, as far as the actual topic goes, uh, we're looking at the Knuckles Clan and the Nocturnus Clan, and I think a very interesting point to start with is uh, the change in perspective. Let's say. Yeah, and. Obviously, because we're going to be talking about Sonic Chronicles here, there has to be a sort of disclaimer about canonicity. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of statements about Sonic Chronicles in the past due to things like the Pender's lawsuits, the fact that it was a third-party game made by Bioware and not, like, directly uh, by the hands of Sega. Um, we are working off of the interpretation that the, the statements and the things in Chronicles could be taken as canonical world building, but the events of the game simply have not transpired in the timeline yet. Uh, I believe it was Flynn uh, a while back said that he thinks maybe it could be it could happen at some point in the future because uh, the Codex mentions that it had been several years since the events of Sonic Adventure 2, and there are there are aspects uh, of the Chronicles time skip where we get things like Amy starting a self defense class or Tails becoming an independent hero for a bit, uh, helping out with you know minor problems in Central City uh, that just haven't happened yet uh, and could theoretically happen at some point down the line. So, yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about Chronicles uh, and I don't want to see people up in the comments like, but Chronicles has been struck from canon. It's not allowed to be canon right now. Like, we know. <laughs> but um, for the sake it of discussing the Knuckles clan, we want to we wanna cover everything and that involves talking about the Nocturnus in uh, almost as equal length. Also, if we didn't have Chronicles lore to talk about, this video would be like a third of the length. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it would be quite short. We, we, we would be missing out a lot. Editing Gamma here. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess the, the first thing to do would be to talk about the games that heavily feature references to the Knuckles clan. And I feel like, you know, starting with them first, um, it makes sense. Uh, the main games we're going to be talking about here are Sonic Adventure 1 and the aforementioned Sonic Chronicles. But we're also going to be making loose reference to Sonic 3, Sonic Battle, and is there anything from Knuckles Chaos that you think would be worth talking about today? Or uh, a little bit, um, not not within the game itself as much as in the the background story. Um, yeah, Rivals is more about Angel Island as a location, less so the Knuckles Clan. So yeah, we yeah. can bring it. We can bring up uh, the chaotic stuff during Angel, the Angel Island section then. Sure. As always, we have a document of notes just to make sure that this isn't scripted. We just have notes to cross-reference, so we don't go off on wild tangents. And uh, we are going to be releasing this document after the, the video. We're going to go back and do the same for the Infinite episode. Uh, so you guys can look at our research and uh, tell us if we got anything wrong. <laughs> I spent, like, several hours yesterday just trying to breeze th Just trying to, like, rush through the entirety of Sonic Chronicles <laughs> for any meaningful information in the game script. And I think... It, I think it was worth it in the end, because there's some good stuff. Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, to actually get to the topic in question, let's start off by talking about the leaders of the two clans. Sure, yes. Um, we don't know much about the history of the clans beyond uh, the leaders that we hear a bunch about. Um, 
But on the Knuckles Clan side, we have Pachakamak, uh, who, who, you know, not Pack is back a Mac, not uh, whatever silly name people call him. Uh, <laughs> his name's not that hard to pronounce once you get your mouth around it. But he was the, the Knuckles Clan leader in the 4,000 years ago time slot that is covered by SA1's flashbacks and all of the history that we hear about in Sonic Battle and Chronicles and such. Um, he was a bit of a dick. He wasn't very kind. Um, his mother, because I, I, I believe we have confirmation that uh, to Carl's grandmother, that character we'd hear about but never see, uh, was on Papa's side. Uh, she was yeah. super chill. Uh, um, in the Sonic Adventure Navigations Guide, there's a section called the Chaos Emerald Legend, which Wendy translated back in 2018. Uh, with the death of the mother, who was of a politically moderate faction, uh, Pachamachak takes on the opportunity to lead the family race. So, yeah. Uh, that's, just that's talking about how his name isn't that I know, I'm sorry, you know how I am with pronunciations of weird names. Right, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, the Knuckles Clan weren't always as warmongering as they once were. Uh, Takal's grandmother has been, both in adventure and in external media, been referred to as being a much fairer, um, more benevolent leader who cared more about just doing right by her people and uh, you know, respecting their culture. Uh, she was the one who taught Takal things like like her, her, her mysticism, right? Because I'm... Forgetting what yeah. powers can because Tikal has a lot of powers, but like I'm forgetting which ones are specifically said to be tied back to to Granny. I mean, we know that uh, her grandmother taught her specifically the uh, the rhyme that we now co consider to call's prayer. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah See, really, it's called sure Tikal's grandmother's much, prayer, but you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not sure how much specific magical power comes with uh, with that knowledge, but it's probably at least some. Uh, but I think it is worth at least acknowledgement that despite the Knuckles clan simply one generation back being very much not as violent, it did, when you talk to the various echidnas when you get to visit the village in the SA1 flashbacks, it doesn't really seem like any of them have any regrets about the going to oh, no. the, this warlike nature. Yeah, and to be fair, uh, it could be uh, posited that those guys were all soldiers who were probably all down for this. Um, who's to say? Uh, you know, because we never get to see Takal's grandmother or any more peaceful echidnas in the game. But it is also oh, worth yes, noting like, that... just thirty, so just thirty soldiers parading around this one singular square of the village. Yeah, just talking about like God, I love violence. Um, <laughs> And, and worth noting, while we're talking about uh, notable people from the Knuckles clan, uh, you know, brushing onto Carl a little bit, um, it has been mentioned, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a common fandom misconception that she's like this whoopee who, who, who doesn't, she's like, no, no fighting, like Nanako from the fucking Persona 4 comic. Like, but no, uh, most of her bios are like, yeah, she's a proud warrior, she could kick your ass. So, as much as we are talking about, you know, Takal's grandmother being this peaceful, benevolent leader who is, you know, less power-thirsty uh, than, than Pachakamek, I, I don't want to <laughs> suggest that she, you know, never fought a day in her life, because if Takal is, is a proud warrior, then, yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't rule out her grandmother also being able to let your ass out flat. Here's a thought, actually, and it's like just a thought that came up to me now, it's not in the notes. Um, but considering what the Nocturnus clan is like canonically, do you think that the evolution of the Knuckles clan from a politically moderate faction to being like these aggressive warmongers could have potentially been comparable to what happened to the White Fang in Ruby? You and your fucking Ruby comparisons. Um, <laughs> I like the show! Listen. <laughs> uh... you, you get what I mean though, right? Like well, the idea of a... since I watched the show on my own, so okay. <laughs> maybe I don't well, actually. <laughs> there's um in Ruby, the way the White Fang is handled is in the past it used to be like a peaceful protesting group led oh, by Kira, right. yeah, 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 and then yeah, yeah. Uh, over time it became okay. jaded by uh, things just not working out, and eventually the populace was convinced that uh, Sienna Khan's methodology of might makes right would be the only way they could have their message heard by the greater world. And obviously this is like this isn't a protesting group. Uh, this is like human rights group. This is like a tribe. But the same idea of like 
uh, the peaceful group trying to earn their land through diplomacy, uh, slowly getting like jaded and eventually convinced that the warlike way of the new kid on the block is the right path to take. That could potentially have been what drove uh, Bajemachek to become the leader of the clan. Yeah, and obviously there's a, there's a layer of nepotism, um, you know, passing the clan down to her son. Uh, but yeah, I get what you mean. Um, I always thought, especially given the added uh, rep context, as you referred to it on the notes of, you know, Pachakamek's actions in Sonic Adventure being a little more understandable when you have the, the idea of the Nocturnus breathing down his neck. Um, yeah, in, in a similar vein, um, him being a more welcomed leader and all those guys in the square being like, yeah, fucking violence. It could very well be uh, born from dissatisfaction with with peace and diplomacy and stuff. Like it's not gotten them anywhere. Um, and now, uh, with 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 the Knuckles Clan out of the way, I feel like that it's a good segue to talk about the important people on the other side who who drove yeah, that change. I was just about to mention because uh, this change. Was... Nick's... <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's the most diplomatic man going. We're gonna conquer the world, says Ix literally every time that he gets an inch of power. <laughs> God. I hate to draw this comparison because I love Shade and I love her arc, but I can't, I can't let's see, now it's my turn to make a comparison. Um, I, I can't help but think of the, the plot twist from the shitty Devil May Cry reboot when I think of... Um, when I think of what happens to her, because, you know, like you say, Ix, he, he got the power of the Master Emerald, and he was like, uh, yeah, we're gonna take over the world, we're gonna make them rue the day, they locked us up, and Shade was like, well, I, I thought we just wanted to go home. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, in fucking DMC Devil May Cry, Dante and Virgil get all the way to the end, and then they're like, we did it, and Virgil's like, yeah, now we can enslave the humans, and Dante's like, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's this whole massive like dramatic plot twist that's purely born from it, Virgil just never said the back half of that sentence to him once. It's the beginning of the end for the demons. Mankind will be free. Yes. Free from the demons. The path is clear for us to rule. What did you just say? The path is clear for us to rule. So, Ix is pretty fearsome because this is like 4,000 years in the past. They have robots. Yes, they had very advanced robots because, you know, we can talk about Ix and how scary he is, like in terms of his power, like, you know, casually wiping out most of the main characters uh, of Sonic the Hedgehog in one blow. Um, but uh, we need to talk about the Gizoids as well because those guys... Okay, everyone, everyone knows about Mal. He, he was a good boy um, when we saw him in, in Sonic Chronic, Sonic Battle, rather. But imagine an entire army of those <laughs> who can all do the copying thing, because it was said the copying was not an Amal specific thing. Uh, in Sonic Chronicles, all the Gizoid enemies can use your power moves. Uh, mm -hmm. It is also worth yeah. note that uh, em Emerald was considered to be the strongest of the Gizoids, and that's probably because he was the only one who could interface with Chaos Emeralds, which also makes yeah. sense because uh, the period of time where Emerald was created is the only time that the Nocturnus claim would have had access to the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, but, and you know, if that wasn't the case, then there wouldn't be anything setting him apart from the other Gizoids. And it did, uh, again, uh, Carib and Skiller, uh, no, no, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing names right, um, they, they have Chaos Emeralds, so if they could interface with them, why didn't they? Uh, and I feel like I want to talk about those guys a little bit more because I love those funky dudes. Um, we can do that in the Nocturne section. Wait, your turn. What are in the Nocturne section? We're talking about important people from the clan. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but like, don't don't yeah. go too far into them. Yeah, f finish your point, first. What were you going to say? Uh, I did want to bring up that it is like outright confirmed that yes, the Nocturnus did have the Gizoids during the war. Because when yes. Nestor is talked to during his lore dumps, he very distinctly brings up, With the power of the Gizoids, no one could defeat Nyx. Lord Nyx led us to conquest and battle with the Gizoids at the head of the army. Such violence and death. So yeah, they were around during the events of the yeah. war. Which means the Knuckles clan were trying to fight Gizoids with spears. No wonder they were yeah. losing. 
<laughs> it's it's really unfortunate, and it, again, it brings back to mind. Yeah, it's really easy to to see them as horrific one-dimensional monsters, you know, murdering water babies and trampling their own kin. Uh, and again, that was horrific. That you know, the the game rightfully paints that as a as a as a very drastic and nasty thing to do. But when you have this additional context, it makes it a bit more layered, and it you know, you can see why Pachacamac is as. You know, if, if we want to apply this idea that he was trying to live up to the legacy of his mother by granting the people a new way, uh, a way to possibly take back their freedom from the encroaching Nocturnus, you know, he was willing to, to trample and possibly, well, gravely injure, almost kill his own daughter just because she wouldn't get out of the way. Like, uh, again, you think about these guys, they have spears, they have presumably some basic magic abilities, if you want to talk about, you know, things like the Mystic Melody, the, the Ancient Light, if you swing with that, not just being a gameplay element. Um, things like Takal's moves in the Sonic Adventure 2 multiplayer, the Thunder Arrow that Knuckles uses in the fight against Rouge. All that kind of stuff, you know, they, they could have had some of that, definitely. Um, but the minute they use it, so do the Gizoids. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but I just can't help imagine, like... This Gizzard army coming towards the Knuckles clan. Quick, deploy the flute players! <laughs> We're going to make platforms appear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. Um, it's scary. Uh, they, they they really didn't have much of an option. And uh, God, now I'm just thinking about the timeline where Pachacamac just grabbed the emeralds and popped a super transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it's a potentially... Well, I actually brought this up in discussion earlier, but with uh, someone in the studio. But I don't think Pachemachek would be able to like get a super form immediately, just because no, I don't not. believe he would have uh, the same level of chaos affinity as Takal does. Yeah, like if, if if the whole pure heart thing is anything to go by, um, he he would probably struggle. And obviously, chaos being there. Uh, if he were to have a chance at grabbing the Chaos Emerald, it would be a very, like, do this now before the water boy punches your face off. I wanna get a super form! I wanna! I wanna! I wanna! <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe one day, Pachak. Maybe Scourge will make a what-if about you. Like the like the Bardock ones that Massacre has. Ah, uh, perhaps. I guess it's also worth note that apparently... We'll get more into detail on this in the Nocturne section, but apparently from the perspective of the uh, of Nocturnus clan, it's only been a few years in the Twilight Cage. Very so yeah. the technology we see them possessing, with the exception of the warp belt, because that is confirmed to be a recent thing, but like the yeah. energy blades and all that, the advanced armor, mm -hmm. they had those back in the time of the Knuckles clan. I mean, it really just makes... How? Like... How can one culture be so advanced when the people around them were so not? I and mean, I, I guess it's just Sonic Wakanda. Yeah, I, I guess, like, you know, maybe they found a cache of technology from people even older than them. And I know some people like to think that they had, um, that, again, this is purely headcanon territory. Some people like to think the ancient Babylonians were benefactors of them, of sorts, who, like, were, like, messing with the order of things, gave this one clan, like, a bunch of technology to see what would happen. Again, I, I don't have much stake in that. I'm, I'm not all that knowledgeable about the Babylonians. Uh, we'll probably do a video on them someday. We'll have to get, we'll have to get uh, some some riders experts in on that. Um, a certain Polish man assisting. Yes, uh, certain Polish man, our boy Simon. Um, they they really were frightening back in the day, um, and the fact that for, for them it's only been a few years. They they come back in the present. And uh, the, the, the Marauders refer to the people of Sonic's world in Chronicles as, as primitives. They still see them as, you know, the, the, the same way they viewed the Knuckles clan all that time ago. And... Yeah, Tails, Tails very explicitly says that this technology is beyond what even he could make. And he's Tails! You know, Mr. I can program a supercomputer with detergent and a toothpick, right? And then paper clips or whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've built a TV out of paper clips and reprogrammed a supercomputer using dishwashing detergent and a toothpick. I'm not even gonna need the detergent for this one. <laughs> Because he says that sort of thing about Eggman too, but with Eggman it's more because Eggman like Eggman makes everything super jank and like hard to approach unless you're him and you know his ways. 
Like, mm -hmm. he, he, he's that guy who doesn't leave comments in his code. And he has a bunch of like weirdly named variables and like janky like setups inside his machines. The Nocturnus is just like, I can't fucking comprehend you. And that harkens back to Sonic Battle where you try to plug a Merle into a computer and that computer is going to blow up. Even the GUN supercomputer, like the <laughs> the guardian units of the, of, the, of the nations, the world police, they plugged uh, Emerald into, into their strongest computer and that computer fucking blew. So well, like, that was that was fifty years ago. To be fair, no, no, this no, that that happened in the present. This oh, was the, wait, that was the present. Yeah, Tails' episode is all about him getting to the GUN supercomputer in Central City, and like Rouge lets him in. Uh, he plugs him early. Oh, and it blows up. okay. Can you tell I haven't played Sonic Battle? <laughs> oh, see, you did the research on Chronicles, but you skimped that on. But well, you're lucky. I've beaten it like five times. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the battle person. You can cover there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, to get back fuck. to the main topic, though, uh, yeah, Nocturnus are friggin' scary. That's why the Knuckles clan felt that they needed the Chaos Emerald in order to stand a chance. And I think it is worth note that when they actually went to the shrine, there is a timeline where they could have just gotten the Chaos Emeralds and not pissed off Chaos. Because a lot yeah. of people don't realize this, but Chaos is specifically said to be the protector of the Chow. He was angry because the Knuckles clan trampled over the Chow into Call. He he didn't really care didn't that care much. Yeah, no, like, you, there's an argument to, to be said where he's the first guardian of the Master Emerald, and I would probably agree with that, but it is stated multiple times in the Chaos, that, uh, in the Chaos Emerald legend, it said that in the past, individual Chaos Emeralds have been stolen and Chaos has just gone out to get them back without causing, like, a big calamity. It was specifically yeah. the violence of the Knuckles clan that ticked him off. And hey, then, uh, maybe if Takal's grandma was still was still in charge, they could have just asked nicely. Maybe Takal's grandma could have popped asleep before him, huh? <laughs> I mean, maybe. I, I, <laughs> what's, what's fucking X gonna do when the super guilt comes at him? I was gonna make that joke, damn it! <laughs> Drop kicks him through the window. I mean, yeah, uh, X himself was able to pop a super form at the end of Chronicles. So I mean, it's not like it. Yeah, it's not like you lose it with age. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, uh, and then there's what happens with Perfect Chaos, right? Because it's weird. There's like a slight contradiction that I noticed while doing the research, right? Because. Mm -hmm. It's said in the Japanese script of Sonic Adventure, specifically during like uh, the pre-final boss cutscene where Perfect Chaos is in Station Square. It said that apparently Cha Perfect Chaos ravaged the entire world, so that was probably a global flood. But yeah. likewise, it's said in Sonic Chronicles that the Nocturnus apparently didn't get targeted by Chaos. So well, either they I, were just I, kind I, of like, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, yeah. You finished first, because I do have thoughts about this. Yeah, because, like, either they were just, like, out of the range of the worst effects, or they had, like, some defensive measures that allowed them to just avoid the worst of the damage. Yeah, because, I mean, again, we've, we've just spent the last how long gassing up how ridiculous the Nocturnus clan were for their time period. I think the way I always took that dialogue was, you know... Less so that they got left alone, because that, that could have just been a mistake on the script writer's part. They, they forgot that Perfect Chaos apparently hit the whole world, sort of like how Iblis was said to hit the that whole world. That wasn't in the English script, to be fair. Yeah, true. So yeah, there, there could have easily just been something they missed. Um, but on the other hand, the Nocturnus clan could have simply survived. Like, they could have just gotten hit and been like, oh, ow. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like our walls aren't built of wood here. Like we we you know this sucks, but you know we made it out alive. And then as they Sigma say, Sigma grind set rule thirty seven: ignore the flood. Just simply ignore the biblical flood, <laughs> and, <laughs> and just come out, uh, find the the very substantially wet planet, and uh, and take that shit over. That's yours now. Welcome to planet marshland. <laughs> Everything's soggy. I mean, they did, like, conquer most of the Western world. Yeah, I mean, they, they say, like, yeah, they, we, 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 we had the whole fucking world, and then... Uh-oh, Space Squid! Yeah, but we'll get to that later. Um, when the Perfect Chaos incident you. did happen, one specific event that took place was the creation of Angel Island, 
And I think that's specifically yeah. a very interesting topic because not a lot of people realize this, but we have seen where Angel Island comes from. We didn't mm. see it actually like rise out of the ground, but it's made pretty clear in Sonic Adventure that you know when you go to like the end of Mystic Jungle where the railing is and you have like the entrance to Final Egg, and there's just this giant pit that has like a forest mm. like down a giant cliff. Yeah, that's where Angel Island came from. Yeah, because um, if I'm not mistaken, because you, you talk about this quite a lot in like the studio and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I believe the backing for this is that, like, isn't it in the flashbacks? That area is replaced with the, like, the, the town square that you walk around uh, with well, like, the, the ancient beginners? Or am I, am I well, getting that it's wrong? more that uh, that town square is actually, uh, in the present, is the entrance to the Lost World level. Oh, and that yeah, is yeah. right next to the giant pit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that is guess... definitely where it <laughs> came from. And um, it, it being risen, th there's been a few statements on how that happened, isn't it? Because I, I believe there was like a really old statement that was like the gods did it. Um, that, that was, was before Sonic was Adventure. Like, yeah, that, that was before Sonic Adventure. Uh, and then it was, uh, so was it, what was the one after that? The one that Takal did it? Uh, no, there was no, no, that's the most like, recent one. Because uh, okay. the one that the one that came after that, which I've heard, which I heard a lot before the Encyclopedia came out, was that it was like uh, essentially a side effect of sealing chaos, where like the residual energy whiplash is what caused Angel Island to rise into the sky. But right, the Encyclopedia yeah. has recently said in its uh, in its analysis of Sonic Adventure's story, uh, it specifically mentions that Angel Island was brought into the sky by Takal. Okay, our boss. Fucking raising islands out of the sky, that's what we like to see. Um, or raising islands into the sky, rather. <laughs> mm -hmm. God. Yeah, like, I, I always used to, like, um, argue that, like, oh, there's no there's no reason to call it should have, like, fucking died. She, like, if Chaos gets to, like, come out of the Master Emerald and still be fleshy, I mean, I feel like Takal's physical body should still be preserved, but. Oh. Yeah, with, with all the Encyclopedia has added on to that context, saying that not only did she seal chaos, she lifted the. I, it makes sense that her body kind of. <laughs> Roxy, I think it's also worth note that by like the anatomy of the Chow and Chaos, they are literally just a soul surrounded by water. Yeah, I just like the idea of Takal being around. Yeah, but you could you could easily say yeah. that Chaos did like effectively die he just came back e e more easily because he didn't have a physical body that wasn't just water i always come back i mean he, he does he came back in battle <laughs> he did come back in battle people try and f argue that's not canon to my face <laughs> he's in the story shut up <laughs> anyway um so, Gosh. Angel Island's up in the sky, and not all of the Knuckles clan gets wiped out, but uh, Takal's yeah, bloodline yeah. does. Takal's bloodline is gone, and Knuckles is not related to her. Yeah, because I, I, I was always a big stickler for that, because, like, you know, um, Takal is often referred to as Knuckles' ancestor, but the... Because it, it, this usually comes up in the topic of, is shipping them okay? So, like, because to, uh, I always find it weird because Takal is constantly referred to as Knuckles' ancestor, but Knuckles in Chronicles says that um, his his bloodline, his direct uh, parentage, stretching all the way back, were the only ones that you know survived into the present day um, up there on Angel Island. I, I feel like there would have had to have been you know other families up there. Um, I mean, it obviously yeah. wasn't family if he survived if like the bloodline survived for four thousand years yeah i don't, I don't think i don't think knuckles is four thousand years worth of inbred um it was probably like but, a half dozen people or so yeah yeah because well, not, again, not a half dozen sorry like two dozen like because again uh chronicles in its codex for angel island mentions that you know the reason that people were able to survive up there on angel island for so long but still you know got us to this situation where there's only one left um, I see a few takes on this. Uh, I've seen some where people believe that Knuckles was sealed away. Uh, this happened in Sonic the Comic. Um, Knuckles was uh, put in like a little time pod. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's really convenient that the, the, the one Echidna just happened to be alive uh, right at the time of, of, of when Sonic was running around. Um, 
But according to Chronicles, the reason this happened was because the survivors who, you know, were on that landmass, went to Carl fucking yoyed it up into the sky. It was just because people kept getting up there. <laughs> people kept getting up there after the Master Emerald and, and killing people. Um, they, they dwindled because of repeated attacks on the Master Emerald, um, if memory serves. Mm-hmm. And That's right. I, I, I don't think it would have been a, a depletion of resources thing. I, I don't know if there were that many people, but it could have been, if, if you want to say there were, you know, a few hundred, few thousand. Uh, I mean, Knuckles again, enjoys the luxury of grapes, so I don't think food was much of an issue. The luxury of fruit. <laughs> like, I yeah. mean, if, if he considers fruit that grows off a vine a, a, a luxury, I mean, hey. You, I mean, you he does. Spin that and off the direct. <laughs> yeah, bless him. Did you know that? that sorry, this is, this is a slight tangent, but did you know that like the first ever document of Knuckles uh, surfaced like semi recently, and it had the grapes thing on there? Yeah, I That's saw so it. Cool. Like, like before he even had a name, they knew <laughs> that they wanted him to, to love grapes. That's so cool. It's it's great. <laughs> Sad that God, he didn't and- get anything in Sonic Three related to grapes. Yeah, they 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 amended it in Chronicles. Uh, they have grapes growing in Sky Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Well, not Chronicles, Generations. Sorry, uh, Chronicles on the brain. Uh, well, speaking think... of Sky Sanctuary, that that is another point on our. Um... Sorry, am, am I jumping ahead a bit? You're jumping ahead. I, I have oh, something well, well. more to talk about on the current topic too. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. There's all the uh, there's all the Knuckles Clan people who were on Angel Island, and they they were like defending the Master Emerald. I think probably because they saw what happened to their civilization and didn't really want that happening again. So mm-hmm. they figured it was just like good for everyone if they kept the Master Emerald guarded. Yeah, but for sure. There was also probably some Knuckles Clan members. No, no, no. There was definitely Knuckles Clan members who just weren't on Angel Island and managed to survive the Perfect Chaos incident. Because we right. know that at least someone made that Perfect Chaos mural at the bottom of Lost World. I mean, uh, yeah, because I would say, like, you know, apparently Nestor, who we, I think we forgot to go over in our important Nocturnus Clan people section, um, he was, uh, he was a Nocturnus dude. He, he's a, he, basically, TLDR, he was a Nocturnus dude. He made lots of uh, chronicles uh, of ancient lore, uh, you know, made sure things were preserved for the future. Even the Knuckles clan liked him because he, you know, or at least Knuckles says that, the that you know, he, he was well-liked on Angel Island. That could be entirely his opinion. Uh, you know, I, I would think maybe he could have made it, but Lost World is generally assumed to be a Knuckles clan uh, built shrine temple thingy of sorts so it probably mm-hmm. wasn't him yeah because if it was like nocturnus influence there probably would have been a lot more technology present there yeah for sure now again we'll, we'll have to talk about that later because of uh, uh another another zone on uh in sonic 3 but, mm-hmm. but what is uh, next on the well, we're going to be jumping down to the Angel Island section in just a minute, but I think it also is worth note that the Knuckles Clan members that did stay down in uh, in Lost World, they probably just got murdered by the Nocturnus Clan. True. Yeah, thinking about it. Um, I know uh, we, we've had discussions in the studio before of like, is Knuckles really the last echidna? Like left yes. on Sonic, so like not accounting the Knuckles Clan, because like, and again, we're talking about you know people could have survived and stuff. Um, I, I don't think we'll have a t- chance to like uh, unless we do a video on Nuxuj or whatever, right? Like, I don't think we'll get a chance to talk about this, so I'll bring it up now. Um, Rouge says in Sonic Adventure Two when she she gives the the, the Master Emerald shards to Knuckles, they stink like echidnas do. And if Knuckles was supposedly the last echidna, how does she know what one is? How does she have this prejudice about them? What? Fine, then just take them. They stink like echidnas do. If that's what you thought, you should have given me them in the first place. The Knuckles and Rouge interactions in SA2 are kind of weird because with the first time we see them interacting, it is clearly not the first time they've met. Like, they are in the middle of an argument, in the middle of a desert. And I, we brought this up before the recording because I was asking, like, oh, was it, weren't they at, like, a shrine in the desert on Angel Island or whatever? Um, but no, that was just a random fucking temple, like not even on Angel Island. Uh, it's because it's, it's Wild Canyon, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Which is like, so, you know, we, we've, we've dropped in on them. Clearly not at their first meeting or like, you know, they've not just encountered each other. Knuckles is with the Master Emerald, not on Angel Island. 
which means you know that <laughs> the reason we didn't see Angel Island dramatically crash into, the, into something in SA2 was probably because Knuckles just parked it before the game because someone was after it. And again, that, whether you think that's good storytelling or not, that's that's entirely a point for another day. But yeah, what I'm saying, there's a lot of Knuckles and Rouge time that we just didn't see. Uh, think about how many times Sonic refers to himself as, oh, I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, the, their first meeting could have just been, what the fuck are you? I'm Knuckles the Echidna, last guardian of the blah, 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 blah. And now she knows. So yeah, TLDR, we're talking about like, oh, uh, Knuckles clan people could have survived to build the Lost World. But I still think that Knuckles is the only Echidna left on this planet. I also think that uh, just before we move on to Angel Island, there's one more point that we're reading over like the the evidence we have that could be important to bring up. Both the Nocturnus clan and the Knuckles clan, they had empires. Yeah, because they, they were local warlords. They, it wasn't just like the Nocturnus clan civilization and the Knuckles clan civilization. They had a bunch of other like quote-unquote yeah. minor civilizations that they all controlled. Yeah, because that, that was from the Chaos Emerald legend, right? Like it was a, it was a time of warlords. Back yeah, uh, I'm, uh, in a time of rivalries between local warlords, Knuckles Clan was but one of several nations. But there's also in Sonic Chronicles, it talks about uh, the two rival clans of the planet's dominant Echidna uh, having like expanding borders. Yes, that was from the Chronicles manual, I think. Yeah, and uh, and those borders eventually clashed, which is what led them to direct conflict. So they, they had a lot under their control. Uh, I know, um, again, breaching into headcanon territory, I've had uh, in some of my own personal projects the idea that there could have been an ancient chameleon clan. Um, you know, way back at the time, they could have been in servitude. There could have been all sorts of ancient fucking clans we just never saw uh, that were subsidiaries to the Nocturnus and the, and the Knuckles clan. It's wacky to think about. There, uh, this is like the purely theory time. No, no actual logical basis for this. But it's entirely possible that considering where the Nocturnus clan and the Knuckles clan were based, it's entirely possible that the remnants of those two empires may have eventually gone on to form what we now consider the United Federation. <laughs> and there was a there was a there was an echidna on the no on the Nocturnus side who looked suspiciously like Commander Tower. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just always been that one guy sitting on that one chair in that one place. No, wait, no, you know, like those memes about like uh, famous actors supposedly being alive back in like the the, the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> just that the one commander tower. He's a vampire, guys. We figured it out. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's why he wants in this photo. He shadow. He wants to drink his green blood to be immortal, <laughs> even more, to double immortal. He's like Wukong. You see, in this photo of Imperator Ix with his greatest advisors, you can see a gray-haired human. With heterochromia. It's incredible how they captured that in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. uh, I think it's time to talk about Angel Island. Yeah, you had a point you wanted to bring up about Sky Sanctuary earlier? Yeah. What the fuck is it? <laughs> what? Good question. <laughs> Why does the floating island have a floating structure? But And uh, we've seen Sky Sanctuary quite a lot. Because uh, I've always um, pondered the idea that uh, Angel Island Zone from Sonic Advance, because uh, we gotta love just calling the zone what the island is. Um, <laughs> it's it's you know it's a floating temple with a, uh, a what looks to be the border of a desert and a jungle area, sort of like a like a very temperate. I mean, maybe even like a like a savanna of sorts. Um, in the background, it's floating above that. It's a big temple, and there's like sand pouring down everywhere. Uh, I always used to think it was just another floating temple, but the Encyclopedia recently confirmed that it is part of Sky Sanctuary. And then jumping forward to Advance 3, we have Chaos Angel, which is again a big floating temple uh, above Angel Island with a bunch of you know basic uh, mechanisms on it, like those pulleys and switches and all that kind of stuff. So, you know. All of these could theoretically be part of. Well, I mean, they are—they are stated to be part of this second layer above Angel Island, and it, it makes you wonder: when Angel Island falls, what happens? Uh, I mean, it's going to delete this video, um, uh, but he, in his old uh, video talking about Sonic Three and like the the the, the retcons that were made about Sonic Four, he, he he brought this up and was like. 
yeah, why didn't we see bits of Sky Sanctuary falling on top of uh, Angel Island in, in SA1? Where the fuck is it? Is it? Does it stay up there? What's supporting it? I also think it's potentially worth note that um, Sky Sanctuary itself does not match the architectural style of either Echidna group. Like, it's true. It's somewhat similar to the Knuckles Clan style, but it's not a perfect match. And because uh, with the Knuckles Clan style, it's very Mayan-inspired architecture. We see a lot of uh, we see a lot of browns and dark greens. Yeah. In Sky oh, Sanctuary. That was something I wanted to, sorry, that was something I wanted to bring up earlier. Um, cultural influences. Now is a good time uh, because the Knuckles Clan are also fucking Egyptian sometimes. Like that's that's kind of like a weird. Like they are simultaneously Mayan and Egyptian. Um, I blame Sandopolis. I blame Sa- SA2 as well. They have um, the, the pyramids uh, with the murals of worshipping Chow and shit, which is probably something we'll need to talk about at some point. Um, I did not know that was a thing. No, yeah. Um, I think it's actually it's on one of the like hidden paths with like the Mystic Melody and shit, because I remember only finding it while playing uh, one of the missions. Uh, there's like this tucked away little corner with like a big mural. Uh, you will, I'll have to find a picture of it so I can prove I'm not full of shit. Um, yeah, you'll you'll have to show me it at, once we're done recording. It's yeah, it's like these these echidnas kneeling in front of like a big like glowing chow. Um, it's like, huh? If, huh? <laughs> what's what's going on there? And again, before we start going off about Sky Sanctuary and architecture again, uh, I've seen a couple people say that like the Nocturnus clan is weird because like they have no uh, connection to you know the whole Mayan thing. Um, but it is worth noting that the Knuckles, or sorry, the Nocturnus clan, have a very greco roman kind of motif to them. Uh, all of their ranks and their military are taken from from Roman things. Um, some of the store, some of the like minor plot bo- points in Chronicles are actually based on certain um, historical tales, like uh, the whole the, the the Nocturnus clan traitors thing was based on like a story about Julius Caesar or some shit. Anyway, uh, wild tangent. Sky Sanctuary doesn't look like any of those things is the point it doesn't look mayan it doesn't look egyptian it doesn't look roman what is it <laughs> i mean i think the simple answer is that back in 1994 they weren't thinking about this <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not um you could you, you could say that about most of this law because it's been so cobbled together like once in a blue moon like oh absolutely put, looking yeah. at looking at south island <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, not just in terms of general early series uh, installment weirdness, um, but, you know, they, they, they came up with some stuff around 3 and Chronicles, then Shira Maikawa did, did their thing in SA1 and 2, then they just didn't for a while, like, you know, um, Battle added on a little bit, and then Chronicles was like, <laughs> and then Chronicles got Chronicles, so it's, it's all in a bit of a weird state. It gets chipped away at. So, some of these things that we're talking about could very well just be explained away by... Well, these were put forth by different people at different times. Like, the whole Mayan-Egyptian thing. Point being, uh, if we are to look at this in an in-universe perspective, Sky Sanctuary uh, slash Angel Island Zone slash uh, Chaos Angel. Bit weird. Bit strange. I think I've heard, like, uh, someone in the studio theorize that it might potentially be a Babylonian origin, but I don't think I've seen any strong backing for that. Yeah, um, I, I claim not to know much about the Babylonians, but I do have my whole big Babylonian, uh, theory. We'll get that into that when we get we'll to have to make a, We'll have to make a whole video about that. Um, the, yeah, it being a floating structure is kind of sussy, uh, and, you know, lots of green. But another thing that's weird about Sky Sanctuary is, um, and again, this comes... The, the, I didn't realize this until, you know, that deleted video by Scourge. Uh, you can see Angel Island in the background in Sonic 3. So, and, and it's like far. What's up with that? I mean, I, I don't actually know if you could see it in the background during the stage, because I know you, you can see it in the in the Mecha Knuckles fight, which is what he was using as... Um, actually, I should probably stop talking about things he deleted that video for. Uh, yeah. But... I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's things you can notice yourself. Um, Well, actually, okay, here's, like, pure hypothesis, right? Yeah. This this has no solid backing as far as I'm aware, but what if we're wrong about the idea of it being tied to Angel Island? That's what I'm starting to think, yeah. Yeah, what if Sky Sanctuary is just up there and 
Angel Island just has a teleporter to it. And it was just lined mm. up in the right place for Sonic 3. Not even like that it could have been lined up, because again, um, in the Mecha Sonic fight at the end of Knuckles' story, you can see Angel Island far in the background. Well, yeah, but I'm talking um, about in Sonic's story, where you have to like climb Sky Sanctuary in order to get to the Death Egg. Yeah, what, what, what could have been happening is that like, whether it was directly above Angel Island or not, that teleporter could have just been wired to take you to wherever Sky Sanctuary is in the world. And that's where the Death Egg was like, you know, because it was already flying away at that point. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. Yeah. Whether that was directly above Angel Island or not, um, you, you could be on something there. But... Yeah, and so, that, that would also explain why we didn't see bits of Sky Sanctuary falling on Angel Island in SA1, just because it simply doesn't need the Master Emerald to stay aloft. So, moving on to the next point, this is something that you very specifically put down, because I have no idea what this is talking about. Uh, <laughs> you wrote down, apparently Hydro City and Sandopolis were potentially built after Angel Island was in the skies? What, what was your thinking there? I didn't write that. <laughs> Wait, you didn't? Uh, well, um, oh, uh, if, if I had to take a guess, this is talking about how um, uh, Sandopolis obviously is full of ghosts and shit. Um, and, you know, based on that Chronicles lore about the fact that, oh, um, you know, the people on Angel Island, the population dwindled because of repeated attacks of people trying to steal the Master Emerald. Uh, you know, the, the cultural historical role of pyramids was where you buried very important people. Uh, so the idea was that this is where they put their warriors versus, you know, Red Mountain, those freaky people in the in the cages could have possibly been the spirits of, you know, prisoners of war. And as yeah, for Hydro City Zone, um, well, thinking about it now, because I, I brought this up uh, very sort of like vaguely when talking about Chaos Angel, uh, it has basic mechanisms and stuff. The Knuckles clan were obviously very primitive, um, and it makes me wonder, maybe some of those more advanced things like water slides and the the transportation systems in Chaos Angel or... And the hand that just comes out of the ground and grabs your head. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the stuff in Sandopolis, like those those coordinated sand slides, those possibly could have been built afterwards because the the clan evolved. Even in isolation, they were they were learning, they were, you know, tinkering. Um, maybe that's what I was talking about. If, I, if it was me that wrote that. Maybe you wrote it and you forgot, huh? Pinning this on me. I'm pretty sure you wrote it. <laughs> well, okay. No, um, no, I'm going to go check the edit history and see exactly who oh, put okay. that in there. Well, while you're being petty, uh, another thing I want, that I think is worthy of talking about in terms of Hydro City, why are there statues of Sonic in there? <laughs> and, oh, you know, okay. I've seen this for well, a lot. So, I figured out what it is. Um, we both <laughs> wrote it, apparently. Oh, ah, well. <laughs> I wrote half of the note, you wrote the other half. So I, I guess don't. it was just something from our initial planning talk that we just forgot about. Uh, well, something, something, we finish each other's sentences. Uh, point is, Sonic statues, what's up with that? Um, I think that ties back to another point about the Knuckles clan. I feel like we're going a bit all over the place. Uh, but with the Knuckles clan, you know, we, I talked earlier about them possibly having, you know, forms of magic. Uh, things like the Thunder Arrow, the... Um, you know, all the shit Takal does, the all, all that fun stuff, Mystic Melody, what have you. Um, they and then also there's the, the mural. Thing for, yeah, they seem to have a thing for precognition because the you know the very famous supersonic fighting Eggman mural or the Nazo mural or whatever you want to call it, whatever you think it is. Some the people uh, that that was a thing a while ago so because back when it kind of uh, became popular to say that the the mural wasn't supersonic. There was uh, this fan design where they made that hedgehog like a reinterpreted version of Nazo. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because because yeah, people started being like, "Oh, it looks like he's holding a, a staff and he's wearing robes. It doesn't look like supersonic." I, I still think like the intention was very much it being supersonic fighting Eggman, and you know, Eggman used that and told Knuckles that like, "Yeah, no, that's that's me protecting you." Like, I, I think that was the intention, personally. But, Definitely. You know, if, if you think it was someone else, it doesn't really matter. Um, point is, uh, these guys had an inkling that a hedgehog would come and help them at some point, so I think it makes sense that they could have built those hedgehog statues in uh, Hydro City Zone, even though it was supposedly only populated by echidnas. 
and I would go as far as to even say maybe the fact that they are literally just Sonic Sprite. I mean, there were, there was a degree of you know memory limitations and like time constraints with sprites. I mean, Super Sonic doesn't have his own sprite sheet and such, so it could have just been for resource saving. But I, I could use that as uh, support to the fact that, that mural is about Sonic because you know big mural of Sonic fighting Eggman, statues of Sonic and Hydro City. My point is, the Knuckles clan probably had some form of recognition. To go back to some previous points, though, uh, this previous point about Red Mountain, which you kind of just mentioned in passing, I definitely think that Red Mountain's little jail cells with the ghosts inside, those are definitely Knuckles clan prisoners from back when they were doing their conquest. And I think one specific thing that can be considered when looking at that is the location relativity. Right. Because Red Mountain is located right next to Shrine Isle, and we know from the flashbacks that Shrine Isle, aka like the Master Emerald Shrine, is right next to Lost World, which is like the uh, the Knuckles Clan capital. So right, yeah. Red Mountain being like uh, this dungeon where the Knuckles Clan can throw their prisoners also means that it's very easy for them to go and access their prisoners when they need to. You know, for when you need to have mandated tea time or what have you. <laughs> I don't, like, there was really, like, I'm thinking, what do you mean access their prisoners? What do they need to do with them? And, you know, Torture probably, for information. Yeah, that, that would be the one. Um, <laughs> uh, also, again, speaking about Shrine Isle, uh, other things that we need to bring up, uh, there are multiple shrines on that bitch. Like, I, I, I see takes thrown around that, like, oh, Knuckles, uh, or the, the Master Emerald Shrine in, in SA1 was so lazy, Angel Island's so small, like, it's not Angel Island. It's a, it's a weird, like, little tumor. <laughs> it's called Shrine Isle on the map. It's not yeah, the main we've island. Seen, we've seen at least five shrines so far. There's Hidden Pals from Sonic 3, there's Shrine Island from SA1, there's the shrines we see in the advanced games, and then there's a new shrine that we see in IDW Sonic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to think that that's on a zero lake because it's a shrine in the middle of a lake in Angel Island. I mean, we only know of one really big notable lake on Angel Island, so I think it'd be neat. <laughs> uh, the multiplayer zones are interesting, um, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of shrines, and including that of... shrine that's up on Space Colony Arc. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the replica shrine. Um, God, lots to talk about in regards to that. Uh, that's 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 fringing on the you know. Yeah, do, do you want to save that for an inevitable arc episode? Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. And then there's a speaking of like weird stuff involving uh, the palaces and the emerald and all that hidden palace zone from Sonic Two. What oh, the hell? Oh boy. Yeah. Well, again, like, we, we talk about this lovely thing called early installment uh, weirdness. <laughs> and, you know, the fact that the Knuckles clan weren't really uh, as much a twinkle in the eye of the developers at that time. Um, well, yeah, but this is a location that was re-added back into the 2011 port, right? Yeah, and again, that could just be for fun throwback and restoring cut content. Um, the Christian Whitehead ports were all about that. They wanted to put in the, the cut CD final boss as well. Yeah, there, 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 there are plenty of takes you could make about this. Uh, all of them probably about as believable as the other because we have basically no information. Um, I guess see, this, this is kind of getting off topic from uh, the Knuckles Clan stuff, but if we're, we're going to talk about uh, Hidden Palace from Sonic 2, uh, the one thing that I can think of to talk about is Westside Island's whole thing with mining and the giant emeralds that are in the Hidden Palace. Emerald Hill Zone was supposedly named not for its, you know, green grass, uh, which I always thought, uh, but because there's an emerald mine underneath it. Hidden, not Hidden Palace, uh, Mystic Cave Zone is a mine with a bunch of emeralds everywhere, a bunch of green crystals of some description. Um, but what's worth noting is that those mines are unfinished. They've been abandoned, they're decrepit, the, the wood like decays underneath your feet and stuff, but there's crystals everywhere still. It's clearly been abandoned for a long time. The job was left unfinished, and there's one entrance to the Hidden Palace, which is full of perfectly brilliant diamond-cut emeralds just sitting in pedestals. So, the theory that I kind of have about Hidden Palace Zone from Sonic 2 is whether it was connected to the Knuckles Clan or not, 
there might have been something in there. And it might have been hidden for the sake of, you know, protecting everyone else. Because it's a bit eerie when you think about it that way. Like, you know, the mines were left unfinished. Everything's all decrepit. There's a hidden palace that's, you know, been pristinely preserved. What was in there? Why did you stop? I'm scared. Well, at the very <laughs> least, uh, Flynn in post Genesis Wave Archie does imply that the fake Master Emeralds we see are indeed fake. They're they're just regular gemstones. Well, no, no, yeah, I'm not trying to suggest that they, they were Master Emeralds or anything. I do think yeah. they were just rocks, but... But it does also... Yeah. There's also, like, the implication of, like, the destruction of greed or whatever. Yeah, like, the dwarves dug too deep and whatnot. You know, uh, the, the Knuckles clan do have a kind of association with ghosts and spirits. So, hey, we, we talked earlier about maybe the surviving Knuckles clan from uh, who built the Lost World could have possibly just been murked by the Nocturnus. Maybe they all flew to Westside and 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 dug deep on the island and they, they built a palace and then, I don't know, some fucking horrible cave crypt had killed them all. Who knows? Speaking of, uh, speaking of implications made by Flynn in uh, post-Super Genesis Wave Archie, launch base zone. It was not made yeah. by Eggman. It was not, and I still think this is kind of weird. Like, yeah, the place obviously has uh, these these temples, these stone buildings uh, that have been built over in the game. You can see this, like there's, you know, metalwork everywhere, hydro duct, aqueduct things. You know, those could have very easily been built by Eggman, much like the very tactically advantageous Carnival Night Zone. But, yeah, Carnival Night Zone was just built by Eggman, that's confirmed. Yeah, because that was in the Encyclopedia as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. Um, but Launch Base Zone, it seems to have been around before, because in, uh, in Sonic Universe number 63, which, for those who don't know, does take place in a Game Ganon compliant universe for the most part. Yeah, it's just I, like, do, do, we have to, do we have to do the sourcing post wreck on Archie disclaimer? Like, I think we do. <laughs> every, every time we reference this book, just let it be known that this was written under Game Canon compliant rules by Mr. Ian Flynn, who. And like until something comes along and discredits it, it's I think it's it's still you know a worthy source to look yeah, to. Uh, again, I mean, unless unless something in IDW or going even further, the games themselves discredit it, then you know mm-hmm. I think it's fine. To use uh, Post reboot Archie was essentially built under the premise of this is game canon with some Archie elements, but it is primarily game canon based. Like the Freedom Fighters weren't it, present yeah. in the event of SA one that type of stuff. It, it's game canon, but with reinterpreted Archie elements. Mm-hmm. And in Sonic Universe number sixty-three, every other continuity. Uh, one of the characters from one of the characters named Relic the Pika explicitly says that she's trying to interface with a computer that existed before Eggman showed up. And Eggman, when he came by, overwrote most of the data and messed it up. Which, so that implies yeah. that when Eggman was trying to get launch base zone working, he was essentially trying to uh, force an egg-shaped peg into a square hole. Yeah, don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear about his egg-shaped peg. Um, yeah, God the, damn it, <laughs> the launch base is weird, right? Um, because like, I, I was talking earlier about how the the Knuckles clan who were living on Angel Island could have possibly built the stuff in Hydro City um, just by them getting more advanced. So, you know, maybe those things like the, the aqueducts could have been built by them. Um, but your uh, hypothesis was that maybe the launch base zone could have been a stronghold built during the Knuckles Nocturnus War, right? Because it exactly. has, you know, computers in it. Yeah, because I I think that like yes, the Nocturne, uh the Knuckles clan did get more advanced over their time on the island, but we know for a fact that Knuckles cannot build a computer. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> so I think it would actually make a lot of sense to say that it was a Nocturnus base made on the other side of the land area that we now consider Angel Island. It was probably like the closest base that the Nocturnus did have to uh, the Knuckles clan's home base. Yeah, like I said, like a like a foothold in that territory of sorts, a stronghold, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it was likely abandoned after the end of the war simply by just not having a purpose anymore. And, you know, it got stolen by the fact that Tikal flung the island into the sky. Or made well, it an yeah. island by flinging that land into the sky. So <laughs> he stole probably, it. Like, the Nocturne probably just like jumped off the side then. 
Oh, dude, do you think that, um, actually, th thinking of this as a Nocturnus base, do you think that the, um, the Knuckles clan, like, over those 4,000 years of isolation, were, like, trying to pick apart the mechanisms like the aqueducts and maybe even, you know, the things like the, the moving platforms on the hinges? Do you think that oh, was how they, very, like, definitely. advanced their own engineering to make things like the water slides in Hydro City? It could be, especially if they were the ones who created the trap system around the island. Yeah, that could be really neat. Um, I, I, I don't blame them for not being able to figure out the cues, though, bless them. But then there's one weird thing that we haven't actually talked about yet relative to uh, relative to Angel Island. That weird ring that Sonic found. Right? Yeah, it's in like the prequel, to, in like the story before Sonic 3, it said that Sonic gets the inspiration to try and find Angel Island by finding some ring that washed up on shore. Oh, right. I don't, I don't, I don't know much about this. Because when you said that, I was like, Chaotix? Uh, we did say we would talk about Chaotix eventually. Um, yeah, but no, this, this is Sonic 3. Uh, let me read the portion yeah. from the Encyclopedia. Days later, Sonic finds a ring inscribed with ancient writing. He recalls the legends of an ancient civilization that once lived in paradise, but meddled in powers beyond their ken. Their civilization was wiped out overnight, and the gods took their land into the sky. Right, and this is obviously, you know, paraphrasing the old stuff, because again, this is the same book that says Tikal did it, so it could have very much been that both stories are referenced in that the in-universe legend was people assumed that the gods put Angel Island in the sky. Yeah, um, that's my take. Yeah, uh, but the actual truth is that Tikal did it, because again, yeah. that's the only reason I can think of that it would, they, would, they would say both in the same book. Well, I mean, guy. it does explicitly say in the paragraph that Sonic is recalling the legends of this happening. Yes, yes. Which is... Sonic's a, a history a buff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this does sort of broach the, the Knuckles Chaotix uh, sort of side of things as well, because, you know, I have my thoughts on where that game fits into the canon. That's um, your field, so I'll let you talk about that. That's, yeah, I did. It's, it's my little scrunkly game. The Knuckles clan seems to just have a thing for writing on rings. Um, because the plot of Knuckles Chaotix talks about this engraved ring that Eggman found that, you know, I'm trying to remember the exact wording. Uh, <laughs> it was warning about the the big ring that he used to access the pocket dimension because brief crash course on Knuckles Chaotix, Eggman found a Knuckles clan ring, uh, used it to access a small pocket dimension stored inside the ring that was filled with energy from the Master Emerald Shrine. Specifically the shrine, which is odd. Uh, I've always sort of taken that to assume that the shrine was sort of soaking up reserve energy from the Master Emerald, maybe. Um, but whatever, that could have just been funky wording. As soon as he opens the portal to this, you know, energy reserve, the energy floods out of the ring, crystallizes into the Chaos Rings, and Knuckles Chaotix happens. That You can glean a lot from that uh, regarding the Knuckles Clan. Uh, they had a thing for engraving rings with important messages. Um, Maybe they, they just figured it was longer lasting than paper or inscribing on stone, maybe, I don't know. They were messing with the Master Emerald, you know, trying to siphon off its power, store it in places. Maybe the idea was that if the Master Emerald were to ever be stolen or shattered, they would be able to use the special ring uh, and plug that into the shrine to use the reserve energy of the Master Emerald to keep the island afloat while they got it back. Maybe. That's an interesting know. thought. Uh, they, they were experimenting with the Master Emerald, they were doing weird shit, writing on rings, and one of those rings apparently fell off the island at some point to wash up and had be found by Sonic, who, you know, known history buff. I, mean, I guess he was reading books uh, in Secret Rings. Um, Sonic reading? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he can speed read. He, he can get through whole books. I mean, that, maybe that's the reason why he doesn't do it. It's not because he finds it boring, it's just because, you know, he breezes through them too quick. Um, that's true. I mean, we, we did see that scene in the Sonic movie with him in the comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, Just Sonic goes to a nice. library, spends like 10 minutes there, read every single book in store. Guys, Sonic, if you didn't have ADHD, you could be a depository of, of, of worldly knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just imagining like Tails is just like trying to like uh, do something analytical and he's just like oh sorry you probably don't get this and then Sonic just casually goes off and adds to Tails' point. He's a smart boy he just he, he, he doesn't you know the classic it's a different type I, I, of I made the, yeah I make the joke about him having ADHD uh, maybe I'm projecting a little bit but you know <laughs> uh, the classic example of you know not book smart or, you know, he just doesn't enjoy applying himself in that way. We're not here to talk about Sonic, we're here to talk about the red guy. 
But uh, and... before, we move, uh, before we move on to Nocturnus, because I think we're pretty much done with the topic of Angel Island. Uh, Did we ever finish the point about the, the ring? Because I, I went up about Knuckles Gadget, so about the ring. Oh, like, if, I, I thought you were finished. I, I'll be fair, because you, you brought it up in relation to, like, you know, Sonic finding the ring. Uh, I guess right. the, the only thing I really yeah. needed to oh. talk about was there is precedent for, or uh, recontextualized precedent for, because, you know, Chaotic came out after. Um, the, the Knuckles clan had a thing for writing on rings. I, now I'm just imagining, like, Knuckles was just trying to, like, look over this ancient artifact. He just slips out of his hands and he desperately tries to catch it as it falls off the edge of the island. And that's why Sonic 3 happened. <laughs> For want of a nail. Um, For want of a nail. I think that's everything about... I mean, this video was primarily... Uh, it was originally supposed to be about the, the Knuckles clan, but obviously there's a lot of context with the Nocturnus that needs to be talked about and you know it'd probably be better to just talk about it all here instead of making a separate mm -hmm. nocturnus video so that's before we go there though talk about um, Nocturn. there's one more point i want to bring up uh in sonic adventure a lot of people don't know how eggman learned about chaos it's oh, explicitly yeah, yeah. said once in the game but yes. eggman brings up that he learned about chaos from some, from finding some ancient stone tablets yes and wouldn't you know it one of the Nocturnus clan echidnas was well renowned for writing things on stone tablets, chronicling the history of both clans. Mr. Nestor the Wise, who even Knuckles is like, oh, when he meets him, which I think is so cute because yeah, he talks about like, yeah, he, he's a legend on Angel Island. Like even the Knuckles clan, like we're super into this guy, but how would he know that? I, I think my take on that scene, whether it was intentional or not, is that Knuckles himself thinks this guy is so cool because, you know, spending all those years alone on Angel Island, you know, looking for clues to his heritage and stuff, he probably found some writings that, some writings, some scriptures, architecture, fucking murals, whatever, that were all attributed to this one guy. Um, and he probably just like, is like, wow, Nest of the Wise, you're so cool, thanks, bro. Uh, you're the only reason I know shit about my ancestry. Um, so when he sees him, he's just like having that, that fanboy moment, <laughs> you know, very quietly, stoically. Uh, Do you think that Nestor was like Knuckles' life idol growing up? <laughs> uh, there's, like, there's that really old comic of um, Knuckles finding the... This is a fan comic. Uh, Knuckles finding the, the, the paintings of the Echidna Warriors, and he's like really sadly trying to like paint the stripes on his dreads um Aww. i'm imagining a version of that where like he's just imagining himself grown up and he's like yeah i want a sick beard like nestor <laughs> how would he know that nestor has a beard did, did I mean, nestor like it was, it was did a nestor, like inscribe on one of the stone tablets talking about his beard care <laughs> yes the, the ancient legends of the nocturnus beard care um <laughs> We, we used cream sourced from, uh, uh, I was going to say chow, but that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, awful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. They do supposedly have the consistency of pudding. Yeah. Um, speaking, of, uh, speaking of the terrible, terrible acts of the Nocturnus clan, there is a reason that Nestor is ex-Nocturnus. Yes, he was not happy with the way they did their everything. <laughs> It was specifically inside of the Twilight Cage too, because he was mm. he was fine operating with the Nocturnus clan during the events of the Nocturnus uh, the, no the Nocturnus Knuckles War. But it was when he was in the Twilight Cage and Nick started conquering all these other alien civilizations that he was like, "Nah, I'm not down for this," and he just yeah, left. because because there's a there's a layer of you know you can understand when conflict arises between two people butting heads because they both want to own this one thing, right? There, it, it was a conflict of borders, it was a scuffle that escalated, you know, Nesta was, I, again, I'm assuming here, but you can kind of put together the logic there that he's just like, well, these guys are, you know, trying to encroach onto our land, you know, they're, they're being not very nice about it, I understand this, but the way Ix carries the Empire in the Twilight Cage is much more overtly cruel. He is inciting and prolonging wars between people purely for his own benefit. He is, you know, manipulating people, uh, you know, all the stuff you can theorize that he did to poor Shade. Uh, 
not to mention, it's explicitly stated by Foreman Craig that when the Kron first came into the Twilight Cage, they were the first ones there, aside from the Precursors. The Kron mm. were just kind of existing out by themselves until the Nocturnus showed up one day and casually enslaved them. And that's, like, it and wasn't that's, that's like a fight. where Nesta lives. Yeah, he, he fled there specifically because he heard that the Kron were planning a rebellion. But the Kron weren't like a threat to the Nocturnus. They were just existing. The Nocturnus strolled up, incited conflict, and then enslaved them. Mm. And they, they already had problems with internal slavery. It was can just, you tell you know... the Can you tell that the Nocturnus are inspired by the Romans? And just to, just to clarify, because we're talking about the order that people arrived in the Twilight Cage, uh, Based on dialogue from the various different factions, I believe it is uh, the Precursors, who live there first. We, we never see them, we hear about them. Uh, the Kron, then the Nocturnus, then it was the Zoa, right? Yeah, well, what? the way that I figured it out is, because I, I went through all the dialogue of Chronicles over the past two days, um, what I do know is that the Kron were there before the Nocturnus, the Nocturnus were there uh, before most of the other races. The Precursors were first, and the Nurgle came in after the Kron, or a after the Zoa. And it also right. seems that the Voxai were added fairly recently. Yeah, now, the course, Nurgle Queen talks about, like, oh, we got here and they were immediately, like, preying on us. So the Zoa would have had to have come first and felt yeah. threatened by, you know, energy beings naturally feeling threatened by a race that lives by eating energy and uh there's also the note about um well i say relatively but it, it's all kind of like messy timey wimey because within the twilight cage like it's been 400 uh 4, years from the perspective of the sonic's world but within the twilight cage nestor says that it seems like they've only been there for a few years and the vox i just talk about like you know everything was chill until kind of recently so we have to assume you know they, they, they might be the newest, uh, if not, you know, it doesn't really matter in that case, because uh, they didn't really have any uh, relations with people outside. It was mostly an internal conflict between the upper and lower class. Yeah, Shade does bring up that uh, at some point in the past, they like sent in Nocturnus troops to try and enslave the Voxai, and then they just never saw those troops again. Yeah, the Voxai are kind of scary. <laughs> Oxai are very scary when they want to be. Thebes is a good boy, but though. Thebes is a, is a lovely lad. Um, yeah, gosh. Uh, we I think one of our uh, planned concepts for another episode is just talking about all the aliens in Sonic. Oh, and I, I would love. Yeah, I, I, I would. Uh, I would love to talk more about all the Chronicles guys, Black Doom, all that. It'll, it'll be fun stuff. Uh, and again, brief. Brief uh, side thing while we're just on the topic of the people, the, 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 the cast of wacky characters in the Twilight Cage. One question that I see brought up a lot is why weren't the Black Arms thrown in there? Because surely they were horrible and evil too, right? Uh, I think it's really funny that Argus just didn't think they were worth it. They didn't think they were bad enough. I mean, I've been looking at this a lot more, and if our if our one-off theory about like the Crom potentially discovering the uh, the Phantom Ruby is correct, and Emerald being and Emerald canonically being the cause of uh, the Nocturnus getting sealed away in the Twilight Cage, it's possible that Argus might be a lot more selfish of a warden than we first thought. You he could be looking at the Crom theory like with no context. Yeah, well, we're <laughs> gonna have to wait for that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's called building interest, my friend. Uh, oh, Jesus. To get back to what I was saying, like it's entirely possible that Argus is specifically judging, are you a threat to me personally? Maybe, yeah. Because that's... Uh, we don't know shit the fuck about that space squid. Yeah, a lot of it is just theories. Um, I've seen God of Order. I've seen just a selfish monster, as we were talking about here. Um, some sort of self-appointed warden of balance it's all kind of up in the air who knows well whatever he is he is extremely powerful and supposedly uh the fact that he exists is enough to drive nestor mad right yeah there was he did have his his mental breakdown in the last conversation because do not gaze upon the 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 the, the space squid going back to the nocturnus clan um we we touched upon earlier in the in the talk about um, Carib and Skiller. I really ought to have looked at how you pronounce those names. That, that uh, sounds correct to me. 
Um, well, I don't trust your opinions on anything to do with pronunciation. Uh, okay, but okay. <laughs> going back to the, the Roman uh, Greek inspired stuff, they were specifically based on uh, monsters from that mythos. Charybdis and uh, and I think it was just Scylla. Uh, they were fire and water monsters. Uh, they have sectors in the Twilight Cage named after them. And, I, and they're cool. I like those guys. Uh, they are the only Gizoids to have some semblance of individuality amongst the ranks of the Nocturnus army, and are, uh, you know, some of their strongest warriors as a, as a byproduct. Um, I think it, it's it's interesting because, you know, we, 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 we have this take that the thing that set Amal apart was his ability to grow and learn through the Chaos Emeralds to become individual, uh, because that's the only really thing he has going for him, besides, because, you know, the copying thing is sort of universal. And these guys have their own individuality that was pre-programmed in or developed over time or what have you. And obviously they had Chaos Emeralds on them at different points of the story. So they, you know, they obviously they also had names, them. which according to Nestor they also is have odd. Names. Because yeah. Nestor, Nestor does say that supposedly they didn't name most of the Gizzards, but they named, yeah. they named Scylla uh, Scyl and Carabas. Which yeah. is strange, right? It's, yeah. And I think the, the thing that intrigues me always, and I, oh God, I always get these wrong. Uh, Scylla is the, the, the red one. I, I always yes. get their names backwards. Yeah, Scylla is the red one. He went crazy. Like, Shade talks about him like he's a madman. Like, and, and he talks, he, he's he's sick, he's twisted, he's, he's giggling to himself, he's freaky. How does that happen? <laughs> did, did they do that to him? Like... Okay, actually, was... sudden thought here, right? Because... Yeah. Considering what we know of what happened to Nestor, is it possible that when the Arcus event happened, Scylla, Scylla was looking up? Oh Jesus! Yeah, even even robots driven insane by the trying to process what Argus is. Yeah. And uh, related note, it's entirely possible that uh, Carib's water theming could have potentially been gained from copying Perfect Chaos. Yeah, um, we talked about way back when, like, oh, what would actually have happened if the Nocturnus clan tried to fight Chaos? Um, and we had this whole idea of, like, oh, Carib would, uh, would be busted because they, they're they invincible while submerged in water. They they create... Well, I, I always interpreted it as they create a layer of armor over themselves because the gameplay mechanic in the fight is that while you are fighting Carib underwater, they can only take one damage at a time. Like, they just have super hyper armor. So yeah, that's that's scary. <laughs> they they have uh, a great advantage in the water, which yeah, either could have been derived from chaos or simply been really helpful if they if they were to have tried to fight them. I don't know about copying because you know these guys are they are painted red and blue. They are themed after these monsters. I feel like they could have possibly just had those powers as individuals, uh, but it is interesting. Because the only thing that makes me question that is then where did um, Skull's firepower come from? Oh, Who knows? Maybe, just, maybe Stella was just know. looking at a flamethrower one day. <laughs> good, for, good for him. Good for him. Um, yeah, I like, I like the uh, the. Uh, oh no, I've forgotten their title. Uh, uh, the prefects. Prefects. That was it. It's like high school all over again. And I think with those out of the way, the only people left to talk about are the pirates and Shade, right? Because we talked a little bit about Ix. Uh, we could probably talk a little more about him because uh, it was kind of glossed over at the start. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also like Shade. quick Ooh. quick side note before we go into those characters, though. <laughs> it was mentioned before that the Twilight Cage time is screwed in there, so it's mm. only been a few years for the Nocturnus Clan, where it's been like for for millennia for the people back on Sonic's world. Inside of the Twilight Cage, you don't age. Yeah. Um, and again, Nestor says, like, oh, I feel like it's only been a few years. Like, that's just his hypothesis. Um, it could, like, it could be differently interpreted by other people, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, X went in an old man, came out an old man. Uh, Shade was a teenager. I think her age was said to be uh, 17 or 18. Um, yeah, she's a teenager. Yeah, it's... God, sorry. Now I'm just thinking about that joke that's, that is made in Chronicles, where Rouge says that Knuckles is into milfs. <laughs> You've got a thing for older women, don't you? <laughs> sorry, Nuxish fans. <laughs> Knuckles is exclusively into your mama. I mean, um, okay, but here's the thing, right? 
Rouge is older than Knuckles. Like two years. I guess so it's Shane yep. by her, like actual age. Um, mm-hmm. Still counts. Anyway. God, shut up. Anyway. Uh, okay, no, sorry. I, 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 I hate that I'm about to say this, but speaking of milfs and gifts, remember earlier I made that comment about Takal's uh, grandma like drop kicking X? Yeah. <laughs> See, really, what 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 should have what should have come to pass is we we ship Ix and Takal's grandma, the the two powerful older Kidna people, and then this whole conflict just you know it, it goes tits up, doesn't happen. We call it the political marriage AU. God, awful, horrible. <laughs> I brought it up and I and I don't like it. <laughs> it came to me earlier when I was talking about them interacting, and I was just thinking like, oh man, it'd be kind of cool if they interacted. And then I realized, oh goddamn it, people ship them. <laughs> Regardless. Well. Uh, uh, since, shade and and the other Nocturnus people. We need let's to not go into shade yet. Let's save her for last because I th- okay. I think I think ending on the pirates would be weird. That's true. Let's talk about the pirates first then. Because I, I didn't actually know much about these guys before like yesterday, but now I do mm. know about them and they're interesting. Yeah. Um. I forget exactly when in the game they show up, but uh, uh, it's it's a side quest that you can do. I'm pretty sure as soon as you finish up business with the uh, with the Nurgle. So at cool. the end of chapter eight, where it's uh, you oh, gotta do like a something. delivery run where you take some Nurgle sweat and you take it to the Kron, and then you yeah. go back. But when you're heading towards the Kron, that's when the pirates just jump your ship. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I, I'm forgetting. I read this ages ago. Uh, there's a point about it on like, the Sonic News Network, I believe, um, that was talking about how the idea of uh, the no- some of the Nocturnus clan defecting and forming a pirate militia of sorts, roaming around the Twilight Cage and pillaging people, um, is possibly loosely inspired by a story about Julius Caesar uh, or something about the Roman Empire, where like um, a bunch of defectors like they, they 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 betrayed him and then formed their own group and were like running around doing shit, uh, which is cool. Um, directly tying back into the uh, historical mythological inspirations behind the Nocturnus clan. I think that's me. Uh, well, it is, set in, it is set in game. <laughs> it is set in game that they're specifically pirates because their leader has a speech impediment. <laughs> right, yeah, they make the joke about the reason they talk in pirate accents is because their leader has a speech impediment. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. But also, um, they actually have a motivation for doing what they do, and it's kind of weird because these space pirates are actually anarchists. Their entire right. reason for doing piracy is because they want to stay in the Twilight Cage. Right. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, we benefit here. We don't, we don't, like, X is doing this big plan to like get us out of here, but we like it here. We can pillage aliens to our, oh, to our heart's content. The pirates have well, Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe maybe they, they, they really like looking at, at Argus and giving themselves the, the, the brain hurty juice. <laughs> Maybe. Well, but yeah. Uh, By the now way, I get to, all we've got left to talk about is Shade. Uh, do you not want to talk about X a little bit, or do you want to end on oh. him instead? Is there much to talk about with X that we haven't already said? Because we've talked about like his, uh, the way he handles things. Uh, most of most of the stuff that we haven't talked about is stuff to do with his dynamic with Shade and then Twilight X. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So let's talk about Shade, the Princess of Traitors. Which I forgot was something they call her, and that's Roar's Carib is great. <laughs> that's, that's that's so cool. <laughs> the princess of traitors. That anyway. comes from Carib. Carib is great. Carib is cool. Um, we we stand. Oh yeah, because of Shade's group that went. Because yeah, she 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 was the one who was talking about like he's a madman and all that. Mm. No no Shade. no no. Cielo was the madman. Oh but, yeah, you're right. Because it was Sonic that fought Scar uh, and. Um, no, Sonic the, the Four Carib. I told yes. you I get their names backwards all the time. Um, and I love these guys, so it's, it's really embarrassing. Uh, so yeah, it was Sonic's team that fought Mr. Underwater, and you know, haha, funny, Sonic fighting the underwater guy, Shade was- Yeah, but they were, but they were united at the very start, which is when uh, which is when Carib called uh, Shade the Princess of Traitors. Anyway, with that out of the way, Shade is cool. Uh, fun fact, did you know that when the advertising for this game was going on and they were trying to like obscure the big plot twist about her being an echidna, uh, a bunch of magazines referred to her as Shade the Goat because of the way her helmet looks. Oh, I didn't know that actually, that's neat. Yeah, it's fun. Um, Shade, 
well, I guess where do you start with Shade? I guess her, her first appearances as an antagonist, um, I, yeah, I, I remember when I was a kid and I played Sonic Chronicles, it was one of my first Sonic games actually, uh, after the Rush games and Unleashed. I always thought that Shade was going to turn out to be Shadow, <laughs> because <laughs> they, because Shade is Shadow, it made sense to my like seven year old brain, um, and then Shadow actually showed up. Uh, but yeah, she, I think it was cool how they made this character who was, you know, thinking about it a lot like how Knuckles was presented in Sonic 3. She was always one step ahead of you. She was using traps and trickery and to, to constantly impede your progress. Uh, you know, causing landfalls, having her soldiers throw rocks or like uh, it, was, it was crates, I think, in Green Hill Zone to like block your path. Then Amy has yeah. to come along and smash them. It was cool the how they handled the her. Stopped by boxes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was cool how she was handled. Like again, similar to, to Knuckles, um, this background force you could never really escape from. There was a lot of mystery around her, and I, and I really liked. Uh, I really liked that. And of course, when we finally see her take her helmet off, it was this huge bombshell. Knuckles was like really shaken about it, and you you can go comfort him. Bless, uh, poor boy. And then the the scene on Angel Island happens. Well, before we get to that, um, oh, yeah. there's something I want to talk about. First of all, it's said that Knuckles took down, like, several Nocturnus soldiers, and then Shade specifically was the one he lost to. And that does yes. line up with the prequel comic we got from Flynn. So that's neat. Yeah, yeah. Knuckles was... Yeah, uh, Knuckles and Tails were talking about how, you know, they set up that trap um, to try and... Uh, stop the Marauders from getting the last of the Chaos Emeralds, but they were overwhelmed by their crazy technology, and Knuckles was captured specifically after Shade stepped up and was like, fight me, loser. Yeah, um, but also, uh, apparently, according to Knuckles, the Marauders wanted to just kill him, but... Yeah, but Shade said uh, keep him alive. So that that alone indicates that there is more to her story than it first appears. So I think that's some neat foreshadowing yeah, of her true self. They, um, did they ever like specify like was there like was it just that you know she's not actually all that down for needless killing or I forget if there was a specific reason they needed to keep Knuckles alive besides that like if 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 it no, had any reason she just seemed to not want to kill Knuckles. Yeah, that, yeah that's cool. Yeah. I was, just, uh, I, I was just curious for a second because I forgot <laughs> if there was a reason. They, they wanted to, to, to Pikachu him from the subspace emissary. I don't know, but yeah, Shade they was just able beat to him out of the way, beat Knuckles but... in a in a one v one. That's pretty. That's pretty. I mean, poor Knuckles in these DS games. Uh, some people have said that you know he was handled pretty poorly because they always seem to like drop him off to the new lady because uh, the same thing happens to Blaze. In, in Rush, she like smacks the shit out of Knuckles in a cutscene. But, you know, I think Chronicles is a pretty good job of also hyping up Knuckles and hyping up Shade in a way that doesn't make her feel like, guys, look, it's the new lady, she's so cool. Because again, like, uh, her handling, it felt like she was one step ahead of you. Uh, and it was like, damn, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> and people mock Chronicles' as writing, but it's honestly a pretty well-written game when you look at character interactions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, this is slightly me reading into it, right? I, I, will, I will not say that I don't sit here and, and lie awake at night thinking about Shade the Echidna, uh, <laughs> but the thing that always gets me about Shade, and it's this character archetype that I've, I've latched onto in the past as well, is... Um, after the scene on Angel Island where Itch reveals his true intentions and all that, like he's like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna not only come home, uh, but we're gonna fuck everything up because we're angry and bitter and, I, and I'm crazy. And Shade was, you know, she was appalled at this. She really didn't like that. Uh, she just wanted to go home. She just wanted to live and exist, be happy. And you know, Ix does that fucking crazy shit where he slams his stuff on the, on the island and just wipes out everyone. Which, I mean, if you want to talk about characters getting wanked, uh, to use the versus battle terminology uh, sparingly, right? Characters showing up and immediately being like, I'm better than you. I feel like X is the one you want to talk about, really. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, but again, it, it, it's cool. We, we don't get villains that just show up and like fucking just fucking let the balls hang like that, as, as, as the expression goes. Like, God, it was Except cool. Except for Infinite, and... but you know... 
Extra de En voor Ja, ja, plus. We already did a video about Infinite. That, I'm, I'm not about to go on a tangent about him. Uh, mm-hmm. We already Shade, did that. <laughs> Shade, after this... I mean, obviously, yeah, there was the whole thing with Knuckles saving her and stuff. Um, you know, which kind of ties back to she, she didn't let him die. Uh, he didn't do the same. Um, well, he, he did the same as to not let her die. Uh, Shade is immediately like, Oh, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> like, and she talks about specifically, like, I'm going to die. Like, I, 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 the next time X sees me, like, knowing that I don't, like, agree with him anymore, he's gonna kill me, but I still want to join you anyway. And throughout the game, she is very insistent on clinging to Sonic's leg, so to speak, as I said earlier. And obviously, you know, this sparks fly from Amy's direction, um, but I always kind of viewed that as Shade has existed for... You know, obviously in her mind it's not been that long, but for 4,000 years she has been this dude's lab dog, right? Uh, he has been guiding her life, giving her purpose, giving her drive um, to, to keep going, to do what he says, uh, and, you know, make her feel like she's contributing to something. And then in one moment it is all swept out from underneath her and it's like, what the fuck did I do all this for then? What was all the slavery for? What was all the fighting for? What was all the instigating these horrible wars for? And the first person she clings to is the leader of a, of a different group who might be able to make this right. She clings to Sonic and is always like, I'm going with you. Every time the, st- every time the team splits up, she's like, I'm going with Sonic. Um, and she's always like asking him, like, you know, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, I wrote a whole story. Uh, I wrote multiple shade-centric things, just kind of exploring this dynamic between her and Sonic. Um, because it's, it's really sad when you sit down, you think about it like, She's been ruled by other people for so long that now she desperately clings to some sort of authority figure, like this ideal of being told what to do because she doesn't know how to act independently anymore. Which is why it's nice to see her over the course of the game uh, develop this bond with Knuckles as well. Um, Feeling like, you know, he finally has someone to talk to and and relate to. Um, Maybe you could even draw up a comparison to how Knuckles has often been led astray by Eggman uh, you know, always holding this idea of knowledge of his past over his head and, you know, tricking him, taking advantage of the fact that he doesn't really know how to um, communicate with people given that he lived alone for 12, 16 years, depending on if you had canon, the whole four year time slot thing. He doesn't really know, you know, his way around a social situation either. And Shade's growth throughout the game, even though, you know, she she still is struggling to, to, to let go of X as this guiding presence in her life. I like that. I like that her when the gang get like brain blasted by the Voxai, um, and she has that moment of just like, I'm sorry, X, like, I, I, I still don't want to fight you. It shows that it's not all just been immediately swept under the rug. She's still struggling under the hood. Mm-hmm. Shade's cool. <laughs> Shade's really cool. I like her. Uh, this, I, I just, I wish, I mean, God, uh, coldest take ever, but fuck Ken Penders. <laughs> like, I, I wish we still had her around. Because oh, there's so totally. much, there's so much potential with her and other cast members. I, I once read uh, Fick where they had this, they they just had Shade as part of the gang, and I remember back in the day when Chronicles came out on like Newgrounds and stuff, you would see these uh, like sprite animations and like these stories, and it was this time where just seeing Shade standing among the main cast was just, it was normal. People just did it, and it was such a cool time. And there was this one Fick that I read. Uh, this is a newer story that had this really cool uh, dynamic between her and Silver, uh, with her and Shadow, and... God, I wish we got some of that officially! <laughs> like, mm. it's cool! There's so much you could do with Shade, and I I can only hope that as time goes on, one day we will be able to to look at Chronicles in that same way again. To, to, to accept it with open arms and, and talk about Shade. Because mm-hmm. I like Shade. <laughs> I've said it like three times, <laughs> I think Shade's cool. Uh, And, you know, a lot of that is, you could argue, like, oh, you're just reading into her dialogue too much, but I don't think reading into a character's dialogue makes the interpretation wrong. (laughs) I mean, you could uh, sit there, you could say that about this whole whole video. I mean, (laughs) we did a whole video about Infinite, and we went on for about an hour and a half, like, reading into fucking everything he ever did. Oh, yeah. I mean, we (laughs) kind of had to. There wasn't much there otherwise, so... (laughs) You have to do a lot of... You have to to do your own homework sometimes. Your own interpretation. 
<laughs> Alright, now that I've uh, thrown out my daily shade towards the Forces Riders, I want to piggyback off of a point you made previously about uh, Shade potentially seeing comparisons between Sonic and Ix. Because mm. when you actually look at some of the stuff, when you take away the Conquest thing, there actually is a lot of similarity between Ix and Sonic in terms of what they actually do. Both like to right. try and change uh, change the world order in different ways. Uh, Ix says that the Nocturnus were undefeated before the events of Sonic Chronicles. Sonic has never canonically lost a battle. Uh, we even get the direct contrast... <laughs> Yeah, but we even get the direct contrast of the fight uh, against, what's his name, Raxos, General Raxos, where Ix is the first person to beat General Raxos in history, and Sonic is the second. So, yeah, in many I'm ways, totally in many ways, Sonic is almost like a heroic mirror to, to Ix in terms of how he operates. <laughs> Which I guess adds even more narrative weight to the final conflict, where Ix is even shown to be able to harness a super form, mm -hmm. just like Sonic. Which is, which is, you know, historically been a very exclusive ability, even before the days of uh, branding mandates. You know, only male hedgehogs. Speaking um, of that final fight, I think one thing that really interests me about it is what specifically happens in the lead up, because Ix is able to figure out, oh, Knuckles and Shane are out there, bring them to me through teleportation, I want to talk to them. And so he sits down, and he tries to talk to Knuckles, and convince him to join his side, which seems to have some backing due to Knuckles' recent thoughts about like, hey, we can talk to Ix, we can try to figure something out, we don't have to do this, right? And then, mm. after hearing Ix out, Knuckles just says, okay, I'm the Master Emerald Guardian, I don't care. And then he just fights Ix. Does it look like I need your power? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's really uh. fun. Uh, the character rate they did at Knuckles in Chapter 10, and I think it's kind of underrated. Can I actually, Though I do no, sitting, down, sitting down and thinking about that, um, that draws even further par parallels to the history of, you know, what Knuckles represents. Uh, this is the Knuckles clan and the Nocturnus sitting down and talking about their problems. Knuckles could have been like Pachacamac. He could have gone straight for the violence. He could have just tried to punch it his lights out, but he chose to, to talk with him. Uh, which, you know, again, as I, as I brought up, Knuckles has historically had some problems with communication. You know, he's got a short temper, he gets manipulated easily, um, but he still wanted to try and find a peaceful solution, hearkening back to people like Takal, people like her grandmother, and, you know, that makes that moment all the more, I, I guess, meaningful, because Knuckles chose to represent something about the, about the Knuckles clan that wasn't just being this barbarous warlike tribe. Definitely. And then, uh, to add to the whole comparison between Sonic and Ix, there is uh, Super Sonic and Twilight Ix directly confronting each other, both in their super forms. Yeah, Twilight Ix, by the way, is the new name for Super Ix that's been put forward by uh, the Encyclopedia. I think it's alright. I, 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 I'm boring, I like for them to just be called Super Blank, because I think it's like... I don't know, something about that connection in my brain just makes it be like, yes, they're doing the same thing, but like different people. But Yes, yeah. yes, you with your you with your constant golden color scheme. I think it looks cool, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's also, I guess it could be uh, representative of the fact that Ix's super form was kind of scuffed um, in the way he achieved it because it was using the residual energy of the uh, emeralds from Nocturne itself. Because like the way he words it is like I am drawing power from Nocturne itself. We just, you could technically you know, we, compare it to uh, what happened with Super Mecha Sonic in Sonic in Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, or, or um, I was thinking actually of that one Archie issue where uh, Eggman is powering the Death Egg with the Chaos Emerald, so Sonic just breaks a wire and is like, "Bet!" and just like electrocutes himself to turn into Super Sonic. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, and I think that that again is cool because. You know, he, he, he had the, it, it's exactly as he says, he's drawing the power of his civilization, of his empire, whereas Sonic is drawing on the power of the emeralds themselves. Ix is grasping at straws, you know, he's an old man <laughs> who is in, in and of himself drinking the remnants of the Chaos Emeralds for power, whereas Sonic is the one they're actually siding with. And, and then, hey, if you want to 
you want to get into that whole thing about uh, Imal's soul possibly being like a fraction of it still existing in the Chaos Emeralds, which is something that is talked about in battle and chronicles, like whether literally or not, Imal lives on through the Chaos Emerald shards that then became, you know, the Chaos Emeralds again. That is Sonic and Imal and everything that those two represent clashing against Ix. And that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I was gonna bring it up. It is also worth potential mention that despite Ix having the full set of seven Chaos Emeralds within his grasp, he chose to give them out to the colonies in order to sow discord, which implies he couldn't use them himself. So in order to yeah, attain Twilight Ix, in order to attain Twilight Ix, he had to jury rig his own distorted form of a super form. And I think there's some interesting narrative in the fact that Ix was unable to achieve the form that Sonic is most known for achieving. Yeah, especially when you bring up this whole thing of comparing the two as being like uh, opposite sides of the, the same coin. Um, yeah, because there's, there's a lot of um, in-universe and out-of-universe restrictions on who can go super, who can't, and uh, it's sort of interpretable. You know, do you do you actually, the pure heart, um, uh, using the positive versus the negative? Do you have to be a male hedgehog um, and all that no. shit? The but, answer is no yeah. to that last one. No, I, I, I stand firmly by that as a branding thing. Stop trying to come up with an in-universe reason. I think mm -hmm. there isn't one. The X is super form being as scuffed as it is, I think. Uh, as I was saying, he's an old man drinking the dregs. Um, it puts a nice uh, cap on, you know, this comparison to him and Sonic. He is trying and failing to, to be half the man that Sonic is, like, in terms of his integrity, like, just being a cool person. <laughs> well, I think that's about all we have to say. Yeah, I think the, the, the poignant silence, uh... <laughs> Go be up your, your your shitty old man today. Don't do that. Maybe <laughs> seek help. Uh, well, yeah, thank you guys for joining was... us for the second episode of Let's Talk Sonic. I am sorry. Hopefully, that's... the next one will be a bit more organized and not like a year late because I oh, we, did, we did ramble a lot here. Um, We're almost at two hours in length. God, jeez, get editing. I, I will soon, but I gotta finish the recording first. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like Roxy said earlier, we're going to be linking our notes in the Google Doc down in the description below, and we're going to be going back and doing the same for Infinite. So, I imagine that you guys are going to be checking out Sonic Movie 2 soon, and I will likely be doing the same. I am going to see it, like, day one, so... Get hype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get hype for and me, going to see this movie. <laughs> And who knows whether or not literally anything we've talked about here will be relevant to the movie, but maybe some of it will. Maybe some of it. So, uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next episode then. And Bye. we don't we don't know quite what is next episode yet, but it's, it's going to be interesting. Always is. Yeah, this I guess So, yeah. I'm Matt with Gamma. I'm Sinfrog. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye! Bye. -bye. Bye.